Hello everyone, welcome back to some more From the Depth tutorials. Today we're going to be discussing Cram Cannons. The big daddy of gunpowder. So if we look in the Cram Cannon menu over here we have what looks to be... If not quite as advanced as the advanced cannons, it's still quite complicated but it's rather simple actually. So first of all, firing piece. Just like the advanced cannon, you need to place down a firing piece to even have it do things. You don't have any mantlets like you do with the advanced cannons. You have six or seven types of barrel instead. But first, let's get some gauge increase on there, shall we? There we go. We're now going to have a 652mm, which is plentiful enough. Let's take a look at the barrels before we start talking about gauge and everything. So you have your basic barrel right here, of course, which gives additional accuracy modifier 1.05. Interesting to note that I believe that in the advanced cannons it is 0 0.9 times the actual thing, but in cram cannons it's like, yeah, we give you a 1.05 modifier towards accuracy. So we now have 53 degrees of inaccuracy with this big cannon. but gonna move alongside very slowly if it even moves at all yep I don't think it even moves at all so let's try and fix it with a motor driven barrel yep there we go we now can move the barrel and of course more motor driven barrels makes it go faster as for motor driven barrels they take slightly away from the accuracy they give you somewhat more recoil and offsets the decrease in firing angle of an one another barrel which is worded a bit weirdly so we'll take a look at that in a second we also have the elevation barrel which basically means you can point the gun higher which also takes away very slightly from accuracy gives a little bit of recoil increases the elevation but decreases the azimuth which again can be solved by using this with a turret which is what I usually do but you still want to have some motor driven barrels on there so you can actually get the gun up not being able to get it up is quite a big problem I've heard right next is the recoil suppression and the flash suppression barrel the flash suppression is pretty much a slightly can you stop that for a second? Thank you. Flash suppression is basically only placeable on the end of the muzzle. And supposedly it removes the flash and sound of the gun. However, it reduces the firing angle. It does take away some muzzle velocity and it does take away some recoil. It's basically a lesser form of the recoil suppression barrel which just like a regular barrel, gives you 1.05 times accuracy, 0 0.9 times muzzle velocity change because you are slowing the shell down, which does lead to a 0.85 recoil modifier. So you lose 15% recoil with this, which is not bad, especially considering that this is going to be a huge cannon, so it's going to do a lot of damage. Next up, let's talk about gauge increases. We're going to be able to crank this baby up to a lot bigger than the advanced cannons because look at that that is a lot of gauge increases and we're still not technically at our maximum you can have up to 2000 meters of shell diameter you can see the bigger the barrel the slower it gets but if that hits it's gonna do a massive amount of damage of course but for our purposes let's just size it down a little because of course the bigger they are the longer they take to reload you've got little corners on there that you can use to make it look pretty etc next up we've got the laser targeter just like the laser targeter on the actual advanced cannons this sets fuses for the fusing box right here you can use this to set certain fuses like low altitude high altitude time from launch and inertial We've got penetration depth, we've got time for first impact. Each fuse takes up 0.25 volume, you can have them all up there. 
fuses do take up space that could otherwise be used for payload, but it can pay it can make your payload a dozen times more efficient. So fusing boxes and laser targeters still useful. We've got the predictor, which is just like the follow shot predictor on the fast cannons. It shows where you're gonna hit, roughly. And then next up, the interface screen. While we're looking at something simple. If we go over here and then we can interact with it like we would with the firing piece. So that's pretty cool. It gives you the statistics, etc. Even if you're not able to see the actual firing piece itself, which might well be buried in a turret or whatever. You also have the six-way connector, so if we want to have like the predictor sit up here. Make sure to connect it up correctly. There we go. We now have a predictor working up there. Cannot connect to the gauge increases, but can connect to the six, uh, to the firing piece itself. And then there's the real question: What kind of ammo does it fire? Well, it's sort of like the old custom cannons because this was literally an overhaul for the old custom cannons. You have auto loaders on here. Which need to be connected to a connector instead of a gauge increase, so... Let's get rid of these gauge increases mostly. And there we go. We'll use automatic orientation for now. You can also set them up with automatic orientation, which doesn't really make that big a difference, but allows you to customize the cannon, etc. Now, we have regular ammo boxes, which are always a good thing. They're used for actually getting ammo in there, and if connected to an auto loader, you're gonna have a faster reload. Then there's fragmentation pellets, high explosive pellets, EMP pellets, and hardener pellets. So basically, fragmentation pellets cause the actual shell to cause. Uh, Fragmentation. So basically, you're gonna have a mortar shell that is anti-infantry or anti-deep uh, water guard, for example. It, this would chew through the deep water guard. Then there is high explosive. Lord knows we all know how high explosive works. It's basically an even bigger boom. Uh, for the purposes of demonstration, we're just gonna fire it, and then we're gonna show you hopefully a big explosion. And you can see on the gun, it's got, uh, on the shell itself, it's got a 19.5 millimeter, uh, meter radius, not a millimeter radius, there we go. Uh, because it was on the water, it doesn't quite have a shining muzzle velocity, uh, explosion. And we still had a muzzle flash and explosion, so the actual, actual flash person doesn't quite work. Let's add some more barrels on there. There we go, that's better. Still not great, but you can also see it the explosive damage went down without changing anything. These cram cannons to actually take a while to literally cram the shell full of everything that they can. So the optimal way to fire cram cannons is not as fast as possible, but actually with a delay like we only want to fire two shells or ten shells per minute or something. As you can see the density level still going up, we are still increasing our explosive radius. Let's add hardener pellets to that, which is basically adding armor piercing and kinetic damage. So if you want to have a slug that pierces through anything, that's what you want to go for. There we go, we are now dense at max, uh, we are now max at density 100. We now have a beautiful trail. Explosive damage is decreased a bit, but on the other hand, we have more armor piercing, we have more kinetic damage, we have more DACA, basically. Then lastly, there's also EMP pellets. I don't feel like having enormous mortars that can really pound enemy ships from afar is the best way to deliver EMP, but if you want to, you can have enormous shells of EMP that should obliterate an entire craft. You know what, seeing how these cram cannons weren't really as... There wasn't really much information to be delivered or to be specified. 
Basically you can increase your reload by adding more ammo boxes to auto loaders, you can increase the gauge by gauge increasers, etc. Get more of these on the side to cram it full of more explosive power, etc. Which is good, and then you can limit your firing time. Uh, you can limit the rounds per minute in here. Or you can't. I'm not no, you can't actually, that's weird. You can put a firing delay on it though. So I guess you can do that. Ma oh, maximum pack time, there we go. Firing at low densities is a needless waste of ammunition and damage potential. Wait until the shell's well packed to increase effectiveness. And then you can tell it to be like, hey, we want to only have so much millimeter gauge. Or we can just go full power. Which is obviously the best thing to do. Fire our dagger. You know what? Because this is a bit of a shorter tutorial, I'm going to actually show you my battleship. With cram cannons. Now, they are directly converted from when the old advanced can, uh, when the old custom cannons were around. I had pretty good custom cannons set up for the time, but I haven't really changed anything since the, uh, the trans, uh, the transition to cram cannons. They still kick ass, though. So, for a demonstration purpose of what cram cannons can do, I'll see you guys in a minute. Alright, so there we are. Here's my battleship. It's got five quad turrets of 1483 millimeter diameter shells. It does a lot of explosive damage, a lot of kinetic damage, zero fragments, armor piercing value of 81 and still going up. Here's a quick look inside the turret. It's crammed, which is fitting for cram cannons. I could probably make them even more effective by adding penetration depth fuses. But for now I'm just going to show you the raw power of ram cannons. By getting us a Kingstead. It's going to be big, it's going to be close range. Onyx watch, deep, big guns versus big guns. And we've got the bigger guns. There you see, cram cannon explosions are going off. I wouldn't normally do this for a tutorial, but you know, it's a bit of a shorter one. And here you can see their effect, their devastation. And these aren't even fully optimized, they're exploding on contact. I could get penetration in here, I just realized, and I will be reworking these. We just lost one of our turrets down in the back. Taking some more smaller hits, but then again, he is in more trouble than we are. Which is something that I declare because I say so. Look! Firepower! This is the real strength. Big battleship guns. Or mortars. They don't have quite have the range to be long range mortars, though. And especially against fast moving targets, they are very inaccurate. So that is one thing to keep in mind, which is why I have small secondary guns. 200mm advanced cannons and a metric load of AA guns on here as well. Oh, we managed to miss his broadside there. Look at that, we just took a chunk out of him. We are aiming for weak points, so keep that in mind. Probably taking out his engine as we are. But, yeah, you can see. Cram cannons. Massive death deliverers. I love them. And you can actually see, uh, shortly before firing here, the explosive damage, etc., is decreasing rapidly. But we are trading that for an increase in rate of fire. And to be honest, they are still butchering this king set here. The poor Onyx Watch won't know what hit him. I would definitely argue there is a place for for the uh, cram cannons, but we've got to really tune them properly. Like, I'm going to set mine up with penetration depth fuses, and they're going to be unstoppable now. Just getting on here so I can 
tell the ship to go forward. Because of all the massive recoil of roughly half a million per shot, so like 1.9 million recoil per turret firing. We are going backwards. Quite rapidly. And he had a turret there. It's pretty much gone now. There we go. Didn't think he would like that. Yeah, he's uh, he's quite listening over the port now. If we start smacking his rear a bit more, then he's gonna go down at some point. Oh, there we go. Some more good hits. Yeah, basically cram cannons are for the big explosions. Which can be a lot of fun. We've actually sailed in range of his gun. Or turret more like. There goes another big explosion. The game is not quite sure what to think of it, to be honest. I don't blame it. It is quite intensive having such a huge ship on the on the field. And then that King's Dead there is just getting massacred. Poor little King's Dead. You know what? I'm actually gonna end the uh, the bit here. Just because this was a little bit of an extra. Because it was a bit of a shorter story. It's to show you the power of what these cannons can do. So yeah, if you learn something from this short but sweet cram cannon tutorial, then leave a like down below. So that other folk may know that this is a useful place to learn things about cram cannons and other things. I have more tutorials on my channel. More will be coming. I will be covering lasers next. Which is going to be fun and deadly for some more Onyx Watch probably. Who knows. Anyway, leave a comment if you have anything to say. And until next time, have a good one folks.